Dear Kai, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the International Orbi Foundation Executive Interview Series. The series spotlight industry leaders who are revolutionizing workplace health, safety, and sustainability. This year is particularly meaningful as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the International Orbi Foundation in Cartagena de Indias, Colombia. We are honored to have you today with us. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, let me take a moment to introduce you. So, Kai is the head of products and solutions for Europe at Bosch Global Software Technologies. He has over 23 years of experience focusing on how connected devices can improve workplace safety and efficiency. His expertise makes him a key figure in developing new ways to keep workers safe while the use of modern technologies. Shall we begin? I'm ready, yes, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. So let us give our audience a roadmap for the today's discussion. We will start by exploring how Bosch is using modern technologies to improve workplace health and safety. Then we will take a look at the artificial intelligence and the Bosch most ambitious goals for 2025. And finally, we will reflect on the importance of international gatherings, like the 25th anniversary of the International Foundation. So the first question. Bosch Global Software Technologies is a leader in the industry. Thus, we are curious, how is Bosch using Internet of Things solutions to improve safety in industrial work environments? Yeah, I mean, so we use IoT in many different ways, right? So uh, worker safety is uh, one, let's say, aspect to it, right? Um, so basically, uh, what we do is we start by connecting sensors, machines, devices, right? So, and connect them with, for example, gateways, connect them with an IoT platform, and then to build uh, different use cases around it, right? Um, and um, so we as Bosch Global Software Technologies, um, let's say, do this in, let's say, many different aspects, right? So it can start with designing the hardware solution, the designing the software solution, and then to help the customer to, to roll this out and to, to, let's say, operate this if you want, right? Um, and one uh, example that I can give you is, um, I mean, it's not exactly worker safety uh, uh, example, but um, that's something that we are going to, to show in, in Japan, for example. Um, is uh, uh, an intelligent mattress, right? So the, the mattress, uh, we have a customer in Germany who has, uh, let's say, it's a supplier for the mattress industry, if you want, right? And so they, they basically developed for the mattress some thin layer of metal, like, you know, you have in the car seats to heat uh, the seat, for example, right? In this case, it's to heat uh, um, the mattress, right? So because if you, your body temperature is is low, right, that is considered you you're not having a good sleep, right? So an Apple Watch monitors basically, uh, you know, your sleep, right, and then can act um, to it, right? Um, and like I said, so there there are many different uh, ways or many different use cases, yeah, um, where you basically apply this the same way. Right, so um, so sensors, software, and services. So this is an example that we, or philosophy, um, that we apply in in Bosch. That's a fascinating example. And how does Bosch ensure that these solutions are both effective and scalable? Yeah, I mean, um, so many many let's say developments we do, especially in 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 my department, right? So we try to do this first Bosch internally. Let's call it this way. So typically, the demand uh, for new solutions starts, um, you know, in another business unit in Bosch, and we help to develop um, this solution, right? Um, and validate it, and then um, we help either, you know them or our customers yeah to to scale it up um so it's not like you know something that we do um i would say out of the blue right so um so we we we, we bring it to a I would say a technical maturity right and then from there we we scale it up with external customers great um let us move on to the artificial intelligence it is reshaping many industries yet it comes with challenges so what do you see as the key challenges in integrating artificial intelligence-driven solutions into safety practices? 
Yeah, I think there are a couple of, uh, let's call them challenges, right? So um, so one obviously is a skill set, right? So I mean, especially if let's say you are an adopter of AI, right? So you need to have skilled people that know how to work with artificial intelligence or how to develop artificial intelligence models, right? Um, so that is a challenge, I think, at least in, in, in Europe, right? So, I mean, all these new developments with Gen AI and so on, that certainly helps a little bit, but there's still, let's say, a gap to overcome, right? Um, another challenge that I see is uh, trust, right? So, I mean, let's say if you provide an artificial intelligence-based solution, the customer actually yeah, wants to trust that the solution actually works as expected. And that, I think, is... Uh, uh, even more important in, in a safety related environment, right? So where, you know, something harmful can happen, right? So, um, and then uh, one more challenge is obviously regulation, right? So, um, so there are regulations all over the world, like, you know, the EU AI Act, and there are similar acts in India, in the US, and in probably various other countries, right? Um, and uh, this is another challenge for many, let's say, uh, potential users of AI because they don't know, yeah, um, if they are actually complying to these laws, right? Um, so I mean, that would be, you know, uh, some of the challenges that that I I see currently. Great. And what about the human factor? I mean, how do you balance technological advancements with the human element in workplace safety? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's a good question. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the human should always be in, in control, I would say, right? So, so I mean, technology is only to, there to support you if you want or to prevent things uh, from, from happening if you want, right? Especially in a safety-related uh, environment, right? Um, I mean, also here again, right? So it's it's. I mean, you you need to have people with with skills in in in, in such a sense, right? So I mean, skills that how to use these uh, solutions properly, make sure it's actually being used. Because I mean, uh, we also see that many companies introduce new solutions, right? Uh, but nobody is really adopting them actively, if you want, right? So then you know, what's the purpose, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, the way to deal with this is to ensure there is, you know, training programs that people know um, what to use, how to use it, and 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 really ensure it is, uh, you know, uh, being used, right? For sure. Thank you for your perspective. So looking ahead to 2025. What would you consider Bosch most significant goal for improving workplace safety? Yeah, I mean, this is also a difficult question, really, right? Uh, in the sense, I mean, Bosch is so big. We have so many different uh, business units that, you know, have, I would say, uh, that do completely different businesses, if you want, yeah, with production, without production, uh, for for automotive, for white good appliances, for power tools, and so on, right? So there's probably not a, a single goal that, you know, the Bosch group has, but many different, yeah, uh, goals that are individually per, per business unit, I would say, right? Um, and I think, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, training is is one key factor, right? So, um, and Bosch has a lot of training uh, courses on on worker safety that we have to to do every year, basically every employee, right? Um, and then um, um, I lost the thought. Um, so training, and and then also exactly uh, there are several um, guidelines, right? So I mean, if we develop, for example, or produce a new product, right? So that we do this in a in a safe manner, uh, in a sustainable way, um, that we don't harm obviously our employees, but also the environment and 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 those things, right? So these are. Um, you know, programs and, and guidelines that are continuously uh, improved and imp also improved by introducing uh, new technology, right? So be it AI, yeah, um, to consider in the development of, of uh, new products, right? 
um, and um, also to ensure that these, uh, um, how to call it, um, products are being used in a proper way because I mean, uh, like uh, power tools, for example, right? So they can also be used in a wrong way. And also here we're trying to adopt technology, yeah? To avoid harm to happen, yeah, to potential users, for example, right? So I mean, there are a lot of different ways how you how you can do it. For sure. And do you have any um, interesting projects in particular in your business unit? For so, I mean, uh, one. Let's say we have one one project that we are currently uh, where we have a POC I would call it right so and it's um, about an uh, I would call it uh, intruder alert right so if you for example on a construction site or in a factory um, where you don't want um, uh, where you want to have restricted access uh, let's call it this way where you know um, uh, you want only to monitor if people basically enter a, a zone where they shouldn't be enter entering, right? And then raise basically an alarm, right? Um, so that's something um, that we're currently working on uh, with a couple of partners in in Spain, right? And uh, yeah, so that's something that I'm personally uh, 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 involved with right now. And hopefully, yeah, from there we scale it up to you know to a, a real uh, solution, IoT based solution. Wow, that sounds very interesting. Could you dive more into this topic, or it's uh, um, not allowed? No, I mean uh, we are still in in early stages. I would say, right? So the idea is that we have uh, radar technology, right, deployed, for example, on a construction site, right. And um, and then to see yeah if if people are entering so radar basically yeah you don't need to um, um, how to say put anything on on the people right so the radar actually would automatically detect yeah um, if objects could be a person could be I don't know what right enter a, like a zone that we define then right and and like I said then a ram could be raised or um a different uh, let's say actions could be triggered right um but that's sort of uh let's say uh, right now just a, a poc that we are currently working on and the idea is uh yeah to um to test this uh, on a construction side and to see let's say how this can be applied then in in a real world scenario to say it like this great thank you for your response and as we have explored some fascinating advancements in modern technologies uh, let us now turn our focus to the 25th anniversary of the International Orbi Foundation. How do you think gatherings like these contribute to advancing global occupational health and safety practices? Yeah, first of all, happy anniversary, right? So 25 years is, uh, you know, a great achievement, right? So, and so I've been working, uh, let's say, in many different alliances, consortiums um, over my career, right? And so I'm I'm a strong believer in, uh, for example, standardization, right? And uh, standardization can only, let's say, be achieved when you know, uh, yeah, people come together to exchange on potential challenges, right? And then also to see in 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 what way um, this can be be solved right and i think uh, the worst thing that can happen is you know if everybody is doing this individually in in different ways right and uh, so i think um, alliances like ORP, right, um, uh, you know, really bring together, you know, all the experts, right, um, they exchange on potential use cases, how to solve these use cases, help with, you know, um, I would say adopters, right, so I, I was in, in Barcelona at the ORP event, and we have seen, let's say, many different examples of, you know, what potential users uh, or what users are doing, right? And that, uh, you know, basically helps to, uh, yeah, keep uh, innovation growing, right? So, um, yeah, and I think, you know, such events, such organizations are really crucial. Um, For sure. And how do you believe leaders and professionals can maximize their participation in such gatherings? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult question, I would say, but uh, I mean, uh, I, I think, you know, if, if, if you as a leader, right, so I mean, either you have, let's say a problem that you want to solve, or you have a solution for, you know, a problem, right? Um, on, on a leadership level is always, uh, let's say, important to to exchange, right? So, and, and um, again, the, the point being, right, um, that we, let's say, come up with potentially standardized solutions, right? So, and because, I mean, like I said, so if everybody is doing this individually, right, so then we failed, in my opinion, right, as leaders. Um, and uh, yeah, so the the more we let's say standardize, and I think this is key, uh, use cases, not necessarily uh, how we solve them, but use cases that you know we have in our everyday life to call it like this, right? In different uh, industries and so on, right? Um, then you know everybody also uh, let's say uh, gains out of it, and everybody can influence it um, to some extent. Thank you so much for such a valid point. And as we wrap up, I want to remind our audience about the 25th anniversary celebration of the International ORP Foundation. And uh, Mr. Hagbar, do you have any final thoughts or advice you would like to give to our audience? I mean, um, so I'm I'm looking forward to the upcoming events, and um, so I hope everybody, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, is also excited as as I am, right? And um, so in uh, the event in in Colombia, I will have a presentation on let's say IoT uh, based uh, use cases. Um, so we'll have an example again on the on the mattress, but also potentially on or not potentially also on other use cases. And I, I'm I'm really looking forward on exchanging, uh, you know, with uh, with other industry experts, right, and to see what they are doing, how they are doing it. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited. We're all excited to see you in person in Cartagena de Indias, Colombia, to share your expertise. And for our audience, don't forget to follow the official channels of the International Foundation. And it is an event you don't want to miss as we continue working towards a safer future. Stay safe and we are wishing you an amazing day.